I think the key was the banner grass, which is a special grass we took in from Australia, yielding on your idle lands, not farming lands. The key issue here is, uh, the question is, do we switch to uh, take away the rice? No. So we're banner grass on idle lands. So idle lands are yielding between 300 to 400 wet tons per hectare per year. So we're talking about the grass doesn't have to grow in necessarily purely arable land. You can use it idle land, non-productive land. Exactly. And put it in. Then the switching cost doesn't have an issue. Now, the question is, why are you going to help the farms do the tech transfer to make sure that this grass is actually processed properly and marketed? Exactly. Well, the farmer, when you, the grass you plant one time. So on idle lands, you plant one time. And then the buying, the key is now who's going to buy the product. So for the farmer, you plant one time, you chop, and then you turn it into coal, pelletize it, animal feed, silage, you've many byproducts. That's where your sector failed before, because your rubber industry or your crops, if you had a drought, then you lost the crop. But the byproducts, there's five main byproducts that come from the grass. That's the difference. Now, you have these uh, products on the agriculture side. The question, mm. though, is f in an application for technology and energy, mm. is this a reliable technology? Have studies proven this? Have you, have you gone forward, forward with this? Yeah, I think that's the question is the UK government and Europe, America, Pelletizing is standardized. So your existing coal power plants, for example, can co-generate by using the pellets. Or if they torrify, the coal burning value then is two and a half times your Semerara coal, but your ash content less than 3%. So non-toxic, it's organic, so that becomes fertilizer. So if the lands then become organic lands. So therefore, by default, the farmer now can feed his cattle organic or his chickens organic and change the whole structure of the soil. Now, when you look at the energy applications, are mm. you using, are you going to be looking at end usage of this by outside clients for baseload power, or are you putting up your own facilities? Uh, we're doing our own facilities, and obviously it's too big a market. So right now, through Philippine government, PITC, and under the DTI, they're exporting banagrass pellets or silage as feed to Japan, Korea, but the local market is millions of tons per month. Okay, when you're, and let's talk about the exports in the meantime. Mm. How much do you think this is going to help the export sector, given that's a very, very volatile side of the economy as well? Well, I would go back. You've got 3 million uh, hectares of idle land. So for your own use, you need about a million hectares of, of your idle land, which become performing lands. So then you've still got 2 million hectares for export for big companies overseas. Well, then finally, let's talk about the environmental angle. I mean, there's a COP21 commitment here by the Philippines, 70% reduction from business as usual in terms of carbon emissions. How much will this impact that scenario? Well, all existing coal power plants can co-generate straight away. And the new coal power plants can run 100% on green coal. Green coal is totally environmental friendly. And the ash content is organic ash. So therefore, you, and your carbon footprint of the banner grass, because the root system stores a lot of uh, the CO2 in the soil. Now the banner grass here on you know, the back end, mm. power facilities in the front end, how far are you along in your project and your development? Uh, we've done, we've got now eight plantations. Our first power plant will be later this year and doing pelletization will be this year. Silage is already shipped into Japan and to Korea. Well, exciting to see you this thing on the biofuels and the power business. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to your insights in the future. Thank you.